Well, they really, you know, they vary. Sure. Sometimes it's three days and sometimes it's three months. Sometimes it's two years. Uh, depending on the degree of difficulty of the story, of how much has to be investigated, of how, how much we want to dedicate to it. Uh, we did a story this year on the 27 pages uh, that the 9-11 Commission did not go public with, um, one of the 9-11 Commissions, and, and that was a year-long project. And uh, on the other hand, uh, we will sometimes interview the President on a Friday and get it ready for Sunday. So once a story is approved, that means you've got a budget number to go ahead and start researching and, and eventually shooting. Usually before it gets to the shooting phase, we'll have another conversation about where the story is. And so it's a process. Once we've committed to a story, it's a real commitment, especially for that producer. Not only are they going to have to live with it, they're going to have to live with the result for two or three months. Because that's the average gestation, I think, from beginning to end, three months, really. Mm. Uh, and so we tend to report things twice. And I think that is also one of the great things about 60 Minutes. Um, over the phone, sometimes individual visits by each producer, associate producer. And it's that team working together. Two, an associate producer teamed up permanently with a, with a producer. Mm. Uh, and the associate producer jobs are really good. They're peer reporting jobs. A little less responsibility at the end of the day for the story, but a lot of responsibility for fact-checking, details, you know, collecting as much information as possible. Once they've reported the story, before shooting a, a frame, it's time to involve the correspondent and start filming. And what I love about that is that, and it says something about a lot of newspaper reporting that's done over the phone is flawed. That real reporters on the scene talking to human beings is a much better way to, to cover something because it always changes when you go out. When you've covered something, you've reported it thoroughly, but not in person, when you get out there and do it with a camera, it's never the same. So you always have to adjust a little bit a lot of what happens in the process of preparing to shoot a story is preparing the questions for an interview and getting the correspondent up to speed. So most producers will make a book that outlines uh, the goals, the story itself, what we're hoping we're able to cover, uh, what, what our expectations are, what we expect out of each interview, what we know we're going to film, and then right down to the schedule. You know, how many days it's going to take, uh, you know, it's a process and it's intense. And some people uh, think of 60 Minutes as, you know, relatively easy because we only do expect four or five stories per person. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. It's a lot to do and, and to make the, them good. The editing process when they come back, how does that when work? They bring it back. Um, you know, to me, it's something I talk about a lot. We're having our big end of season party tomorrow night. I'll talk about it then. Uh, most people spend way too much time in the editing room. And I'll tell you, the people who grew up in hard news, um, you know, meeting deadlines all the time, are much more efficient in the editing room because they've been figuring out how to tell their story while they're reporting it. Mm. Um, but that's next, which is that uh, they get assigned an editor, and this is a collection of some of the best, most talented editors in the television news business. A Warren Lustig being one that you met, who's among the very best that ever worked at CBS. Um, I'm, I think he is the very best. I could say that about him, whoever worked at CBS. Because he's also, they're also producers. They're thinking about how the story is going to get told. They're not just cutting the tape. Um, and uh, that process uh, can be painful sometimes, um, but, you know, part of it is make decisions. Because I'm not going to look at a script on paper. They show me a cut story, and I watch it as if I'm a viewer. It's, a, it's something that, that sets us apart that I learned from Don Hewitt. It's hard to read a story and then watch it and still have fresh eyes. Mm. So I'm involved in the process. I know what, who we're interviewing. I know what our goals are, what, our, what we think our story is about. But I'm watching it for the first time when they finished editing it and screening it in the screening room. And then it usually uh, it's about probably... A third of the time it comes in so well, 
we screen it one or two more times and we're done. Mm -hmm. About a third of the time it needs um, some work, a rewriting, uh, you know, where's this interview, what, are we, we fair to this person? That's what our screening process is. is a, it's challenging uh, the team to make sure they've told it as well as they could, that they've been accurate, that they've been fair. And uh, I challenge the storytelling as well. Couldn't we have done this better? Couldn't we have done this better? Shouldn't we start a different way? Shouldn't we end a different way? Do we really have to have that person in the story?